Good morning guys. This morning I'm out here firing pottery. Because of the summer uh, fire restrictions that we always have, I've built up a big pile of pottery that I need to fire. So hopefully I'll get it all fired today. I think I've got a couple of different firings to do. Here is the pile of pottery that I brought with me today. You can see I have that all heating around that little fire there. So the fire is building up a bed of coals that I'll use later. And meanwhile, the pottery is just warming up, trying to drive off any remaining moisture that's in there. And good preheating like that will eliminate about 90% of those breakages that you get in an outdoor fire like this. So it's important to make sure that they get heated up all around, all sides. So I'll come around and turn these every few minutes just to make sure they get properly heated everywhere. Woo, that's warm. Okay, I'm ready to fire the first piece. I've taken all the other pots and stuck them out of the way. I've got the one setting upside down over the coals on top of rocks. So we can get good air circulation around it. Now I'm gonna stack the wood over it. And we're gonna light this baby off. So at this point, there's not a whole lot you can do except just let it burn and hope for the best. Uh, if, you did your, if you did your work beforehand well, you stacked your fuel evenly, uh, you preheated the pot really good, then you should be okay. Uh, my main concern at this point, because it's organic paint, is I don't want to let it oxidize too much, burn that organic paint out. So I want to make sure that uh, the fire gets to the right temperature and then kind of dies down quickly. Okay, done with the first pot, right there. Okay, it's cooling, it's very hot. And I'm ready to burn another four pots here. They're already stacked in there over the coals. They've got the wood stacked over them. I just have to light it off. As you can see, it's starting to smoke. I still have the Cliff Polychrome Bowl, and I'm gonna do that last. And then this over here, uh, you can see that underneath the ash, We've got decent black paint. It's just, uh, there's a layer of ash on it. You see that there? So, take it back and clean it up and it'll look a lot better than it does now. I knocked a hole in it uh, when I was transporting it here. So, it's got, it comes all the way through. Um, but I think, I think that paint's okay once we clean the ash off. It looks like, it looks weird right now, I know. Okay, you can see here that the wood's starting to burn away and expose the pots. Uh, that's one of the reasons I fire with really small material is because I want to keep the oxidation brief and minimal. So uh, I want to clean up the surface of the pots. And you can see there, if you can see that pot that's poking out, the white is shining through. So it's not, it's not, uh, doesn't have a lot of carbon on it. That's what I want. Now on the inside where the pots are all kind of snuggled together, uh, it may still be dark. So we want to oxidize all the carbon out of the surface, but not burn away the paint. That's kind of the key. And so we're kind of at that stage where uh, the wood is starting to burn down and expose the pots. And so the tops are actually, in some cases, starting to cool, even though the bottoms might still be uh, heating up. <clears throat> and that's kind of the nature of these outdoor firings here. They're not always very even, which is why we use a lot of temper in the clay. Something in the air And a sparkly 
Okay, so here's the result of my morning activity. Uh, just after 10 o'clock, and I managed to do three firings, uh, really brief firings. So this is the first one I fired, large jar. Um, and you can see places where I've kind of brushed this, the uh, ash off that I've got a decent black underneath there. I just need to take it home and scrub it pretty good uh, to clean it up. Uh, and then these three Salado jars and this Maverick Mountain mug were in the same firing. Uh, these all came out good too. Again, I've got to clean that ash off, but there's good black underneath there. Uh, this one, the slip oxidized like crazy, and I've I've never got that from it. I mean, if you look at the other, this is the same slip, you know, and right here it's it's like it's literally yellow. Um, so I don't have any idea uh, what I did to cause that, but uh, maybe when I clean it off, it'll it'll look different. Sometimes the blue of the ash actually makes the um, the slip look yellower. Uh, so once you clean that off, it doesn't look quite so bad. Here's my uh, Ancient Pottery Challenge Maverick Mountain mug that I made. Uh, came out real good. And then there's this big uh, Cliff Polychrome, ooh, still a little warm, Cliff Polychrome bowl that I made. Uh, and if the designs inside again have ash on them, they need to get cleaned off and they'll be good. Um, so the way it works, like when you pull those out of the fire, uh, the reds are very brown, and then as they sit there and cool, they'll redden up. And so we're seeing that here. I mean, if you see the video where I first pulled them out, they're kind of brownish looking, and they're much redder now. And of course, they're covered in dirt and ash, and so a little cleaning up will help as well. Uh, very successful firing. I didn't have any breakage. Um, this one went in with that hole in it. Uh, it had to do with the way I had things stacked in my truck when I was coming out here, and I was digging looking for a tool, I knocked over uh, something off the top of a box and it fell on top of here and it knocked that hole into it. So it's just carelessness on my part. Uh, but no breakage in the firing. Everything was properly preheated and it came through okay. Uh, everything fired good. It sounds all, you know, clinky. So it, it's all fired hard. Successful firing. And I'll take this back and clean it up and then I'll show you what it looks like then. Okay, now I'm back in the studio. I've had a chance to wash these up and let's talk about the results that we got from the firing the other day. Uh, so the large jar was the first one I fired, also the first one I made. Uh, there's a video showing me making this jar. Uh, if you're interested in seeing that, I'll put the link to that right up here for you. Um, and then there's also a video of me decorating the jar. I'll put the link to that up there as well. Um, I think overall uh, it's okay. Uh, certainly, as you can see, the, the black came out black mostly, although uh, it, it's a little thin in places, particularly the rim area, if you notice that. Um, it's, it's quite washed out. I think uh, overall it's a case of um, over-oxidation. I think I got the fire too hot. Uh, if, you look at, if you look at some videos that I made of some successful Salado polychrome firings, uh, like this one here or this one here, uh, you will see that the wood seems to be uh, not as deep, uh, not, as, not as much fuel on the fire as I had on this firing here. So some years back I had some problems where I was not putting enough fuel on the fire and the pots weren't actually becoming ceramic. Uh, and so now I think I have a tendency to overstack the fuel to make up for that. So 
I'm going to have to find that line uh, where it becomes ceramic, but uh, not, o not overly oxidized. Uh, so that's, I think that's part of the problem. There's also an issue with the, the texture of my paint. Now, if you look at when I was painting uh, this jar here, uh, particularly the, the rim uh, decorations, that paint was going on rather thin. It was quite thick, okay? Uh, now, I want to point your attention to this section right here. It's really, really black. It's the same paint as the rest of the pot, but it's really black. Um, and that's because it was very liquid when I put it on there. And I've had this experience before. When I paint the paint on more liquidy, uh, I believe it soaks into that slip better and makes a better black. Remember uh, my test jar here. The clammy weed came out real good, but not significantly better than, say, the Rocky Mountain bee plant, which this was painted with. Paint texture is proving to be more important than the type of plant the paint is made from. So. I have another test cylinder here uh, that's ready to go. And I think what I'm gonna do with this is experiment with paint consistency. Uh, thinner paint, thicker paint, etc. So that's what I plan to do. Uh, these three were all fired together and it's a bit of a mixed bag. I'll explain this to you. Um, these two were made around the same time using similar materials. Uh, and I think the results are uh, about par on each of these. Once again, uh, I think this was uh, slightly overfired, slightly over oxidized, and the organic paint just washed out a bit. Now this one, this is the one I made at my workshop recently, and I think I applied that white while the pot was still a little damp. Uh, I was in a hurry to get the white slip applied because I was trying to get this done in time to fire at my workshop, which I didn't anyway. But when I applied the white slip, the, the brown body clay was still damp, and I think when I applied that, I was dredging up brown and mixing it, and that's why I got this kind of a strange brownish yellow color on the body here, uh, because it ended up mixing with the body clay as I was applying that with my fingers. Now, the red. This is the first red I fired. That is the red I collected up near those ruins on the video I released a couple weeks ago. I'll put the link up here and in the doobly-doo again, but this is the best Salado red so far. This is better than the San Pedro red. It's redder. It's got that kind of raspberry reddish sort of quality to it. So uh, good red, um, not so good white. Okay, last one I fired here, um, Cliff Polychrome. Designs came out pretty good. For the most part, the rims, the designs in the bottom are all uh, rock solid. Uh, the designs around the rim, uh, a little bit not as good. Uh, but really, when this is fired upside down like this, any over oxidation that's going to happen is going to start near the rim and creep up. So I think the reason a lot of that, especially the early Salado polychromes tend to be bowls, is it was easier to fire oxidized organic paint pottery and not worry about burning out the design on a bowl because the inside of that bowl is going to oxidize last. So I think that's why. And then as years go by, you see more and more a lot of polychrome jars being made. And that is, as that method is perfected, you know, and they figure it out. Me, I'm still figuring it out. And once again, paint texture. So when I was painting the rim, the, these little ticks around the rim here, I would load up my brush and then I'd paint three or four ticks and then I'd load my brush again. And so you can actually see that in places where uh, the black is strong, the black gets less, 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 and then bang, it gets strong again, and then about three more as it gets significantly less on each one, strength the black, the strength of the black. And so um, uh, a full loaded brush uh, with a liquid paint is, is more successful uh, than a, as you saw on this, where the brush was a little bit dry and the paint was quite a bit gookier. So, um, I'm learning a lot about the texture or the, the consistency of my paint as I go along here. Oh, I almost forgot my Maverick Mountain mug. So here that is. This is the mug I made for the Ancient Pottery Challenge. The round mug, Maverick Mountain Polychrome mug. There it is, all right? And uh, I think it came out real good. This goes to show, you see the difference in the quality of paints here, you see? Mineral paints are safer than organic paints. Organic paints uh, are a lot harder to get right. Uh, you, get the, you get the formula right for organic paints, uh, they're easier because you have less ingredients, you have less 
items to get ready. Uh, but organic, the mineral paints are more of a sure thing uh, if you're making this kind of pottery. So, uh, like I said, organic paints, a little bit of a gamble until you get the, the whole process figured out. So, I will be painting this in the next few days. Uh, I still have the bilobal jar up here that I need to paint, and so I'll be out doing another firing, hoping to perfect this oxidized organic paint method in the next few days, and I'll share that with you. All right, if you're enjoying this channel, don't forget to subscribe, uh, because then you'll know when my next video comes out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up so I know you liked it, and that tells me you want more videos like this made. All right, I appreciate you coming along on my adventures today. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.